Hey everybody, it's Terry over here hitting the holiday today. Got the birds out. It's a beautiful summer day. It rained really hard last night for a long time, so I waited until it dried up a little bit and I decided to cut some grass. I got my old dog tank, old tank, and there's my German Shepherd bug. She's uh that's my girl. And I thought I'd just go over some things. What's been going on out here? I didn't do a whole lot of breeding this year. It didn't pan out for me and I took all the nest boxes and everything out of my pens and I decided just to go with what I had for this year, get everything trained up and um, I was so busy. I didn't have a whole lot of time and kind of let things get out of hand. As you see the yard, sometimes it's out of hand. I've just been cutting it today. It's been raining almost every day for the last two, three weeks. It's hard to get anything done. But I uh, thought I'd talk about something that happened. It really some changed some things up. Uh, about a month ago on my job, working out here at uh, for D.B. Shanker, company that I really liked. You know, they made a lot of promises when I left my glass job to go to work for them. And then um, 10 months into it, after Procter & Gamble started getting on a little bit harder and started pushing the product a little bit harder all the uh, upper class let's say the managers and supervisors all started kissing butt and started pushing all the working class guys us older guys because that's about all they could get to work for us being here at Martinsburg there's not a whole lot of it's not a whole lot of people to choose from anymore there's a lot of good jobs and all the good people got the good jobs I thought I had one but um they started pushing us real hard and making up a bunch of rules and then they decided that everybody that drove a sit-down forklift that we were hired to drive had to start learning how to do these sit or stand-up forklifts, the reach trucks. And I'd watch so many people on my crew and other people that came and go came and gone had had accidents on these on these pieces of equipment. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't really looking forward to standing up for 12 hours a day, riding around, looking straight up, being 56 years old, getting return 57. It was really hard on my neck. So I got mad and I left. And I was getting ready to quit. And the supervisor calls me, says, hey man, why don't you come in? Let's talk about this. So I did. I went in. We had a nice long talk. Um, I told him I wasn't trying to do this stand up anymore. I wasn't trying to work all these mandatory overtime hours. When you're working 12 hour shifts as it is, 48 hours a week, huh, it's one thing if it was eight hours, but it's 12 at a time. And it was really hard on me. And I told him I wasn't, that's not what I was hired on for. Along with the stand up, the stand up truck, I wasn't hired on for that either. And he's telling me, well, you know, then I think it'd be best if you just resigned. And I'm like, I'm not resigning. I'm not resigning because um, they, apparently they couldn't fire me for it. And I was like, well, I'll get a doctor's note. And I won't have to do this crap. But they were kind of they were kind of treating me kind of crappy there after that as they used to love all of us so much before that. So what happened was I took a couple days and I said, all right, look, I'll do this. I'll, I'll play along. I'll go ahead. I'll start running this stand-up reach truck, and I'll do my best, and I'll do my part. I like my job to a point, even though they went from a certain amount of trucks they wanted us to load to almost 50, and it was all we could do to keep a crew around there anyway because nobody would stay. We had four or five guys that were there that had been there as long as I had been, and even longer, and they were running us out left and right. There was guys quitting every day. They couldn't get new guys in. They were having to go through temporary agencies just to get help in there. And they guys were coming in, and Lord knows what they were on half the time. <clears throat> but, okay, so I did it. I came in there, and uh, my boss would tell me, Hey, man, get on the stand-up for this morning, and I'll, I'll take you off around, you know, around first break or 11 or 12 or so, you know. And you, you don't have to stay on it all day. And I was like, all right, cool. And so I decided, hey, I'm going to stay on it all day, just because. Stood on it, and I rode it around. I was getting pretty good at it. And then I got into a bad part of the shop or the warehouse where there were some racks that went overhead over top of our traveling lane. 
and they like to put skids up on top of those too and, and I went ahead and put one up in one of those sections and when I backed up slammed it to the one behind me and I tore it up I bent the railing and messed some things up well their protocol first off is to send you out they call a cab the cab takes you to the medical center you take a urine test an alcohol blow test and then they bring you back and then you go home and you wait till the results come in hey when I happened I was like, all right well cool I, whatever you know I'll get a couple days off and if I come back if everything comes back good you know I get paid for the time I was off and I get a couple days off no big deal well when HR finally called me back me and the wife were sitting in IHOP having breakfast and I was waiting for the call because I was ready to go back to work you know and um she came on the line and told me that uh that they had to let me go because I had trace levels of THC in my system. I thought that was kind of funny. It's not that I didn't think that it could have happened a little bit. But it was surprising for the fact that, um, granted I was taking CBD, and I'm not going to say the name of it because I'm not trying, to, not trying to put the company down or nothing because it wasn't the company's fault. But I was taking the CBD for pain. 56 years old, you know, you can't take pain kills without getting addicted. You can't take nothing else for pain. Aspirin doesn't work. So I was taking a CBD for pain because everybody else does. But I had a trace amount of THC come back in my system and they fired me on the spot. It put me in a bad spot. I got bills to pay, you know. And um, I was really upset with that crap because trace amounts, it wasn't to me, it wasn't even a real negative test. And it wasn't like I've been sitting around smoking marijuana or anything at all, because I hadn't been. I've been taking a CBD for pain, and it came back, and I lost my job. Ten months with that company. My insurance and everything went through there, and I've been having health issues with my breathing and my heart. My heart's actually swollen. I've been having blood pressure issues, and they said I was on the verge of being a diabetic. And it's just... Couldn't have come at a better time when I've got doctor's appointments coming up and now I don't have insurance. You know how expensive that can be. But, you know, I took a couple weeks, looked around, and I finally accepted a job. And I've been, I was there all last week and I really like it. Another job just driving a forklift. They don't mess with you. That's all it is. You unload trucks. Unloading trucks of skid after skid after skid of Red Bull drink. That's all we carry. That's all we move. And... I might do 10, 10 to 12 trucks a day. There's 20 skids on a truck. It's very simple, one level, they're not too high. It's not like DB Shanker where there were 60 of them in a truck. Too high, 30, you know, 15 deep, too wide. It was crazy, you know, loading and unloading trucks was really bad. So anyone that works for that place, they've all, all the guys, even my supervisor has quit. Most of the other guys have already got other jobs and they're on their way at the door or they've already left. Because of the way, management was kissing butt from Procter and Gamble so bad that they just run us all out the door or cause us all to hurry up and be in such a hurry that we had accidents very unsafe one thing is that everything we did was monitored on a computer and if you would stop for more than 30 seconds somebody was poking their head out the door or something and coming looking for you and it was terrible bad place to work for here in uh, Martinsburg West Virginia but anyway, the birds are doing good. I've got still got about 30. I, I did hatch. I did raise two babies. They're flying around here somewhere. And everybody's been out. Even the birds Daryl gave me. <clears throat> two white ones are here. And the red one, the red cock that she gave me, he's doing good. They're all around here somewhere. They were all laid out in the front yard a minute ago until they saw me come back here. That's what's been going on. Just, um, I've been doing a lot of fishing. I know y'all probably don't want to see any of those videos. You might. If you do, I'll throw some out there because when it comes to the pigeons, other than this you see right here, and maybe some training I'm going to start doing here really soon, there's not a lot of whole else to it. It's not my only thing in life. I have a lot of other things that go on, even though this is one of my hobbies. But, I mean, you can't do it. You really can't do something with them every day other than just feeding water and watch them, see them, let them out sometimes when you get a chance. I haven't seen a lot of good pigeon videos lately. Like I said, I've been really busy with things. Um, trying to run this boarding kennel here. BNR Kennels. You can look us up on Facebook. We've got German Shepherd puppies coming. Rocky Ridge Kennel Loft. We've got some puppies coming. 
Um, when that starts happening, I'll start videoing, or, you know, videoing the repercussions of our dog breeding and let you guys see what's happening. That's Bug right there. She's the one that had, we've had puppies, four litters with her. We got her fixed. That's my baby. She's not breeding no more, so that's the way it is. But anyway, that's what's going on here, Hidden Hollow. Appreciate you guys watching. If you were wondering, well, that's what's up. That's what's up. I want you all to have a beautiful Memorial weekend and watch out for each other. Y'all have a great day.